Welcome to this presentation for the manual simplification workflow. I want to start by taking a look at the focus of the demonstration today, which is this air handling uh, blower. Uh, we, this is a normal inventor assembly made up of several parts, and we want to go through the manual simplification process and reduce this to a simplified single part file. Uh, I want to explore the part a little bit. So to get started, I'm going to hop over here to my Collaborate tab, and I've created a shared view. I'm just going to activate this view so that I can explode the assembly for you and let you see uh, what, you know, what it contains. Uh, there's several sheet metal parts that make up this assembly. If I go to the Explode option, we can explode this thing, and you can actually see how many parts make up this air handling uh, piece of equipment. Well, I'm going to hop back into Inventor and I want to begin the process of simplifying this design. I'd like to use it as a factory asset, uh, but I do not want to send the full assembly over as an asset. I want to reduce this to a simplified single component. I want to remove as many features as I can, but I want the part to maintain its visual appearance. Uh, so I'm not going to use the classic simplify command. Let me show you why. Here's the simplify command. Um, this The simplify command is pretty much one of the largest dialog boxes that we have inside of Inventor. We use it to simplify assemblies, usually into single components. Uh, it is a nice wizard, but it's really all or nothing. Uh, if your options vary at all from the standard options that are listed here, uh, you're going to come up a little short. Let me show you what I mean. I want to use some bounding boxes for the representation here. So as I come down, I have a few options. You know, I can basically, you know, if I wanted to simplify it into just a single bounding box, I can, but that's not really going to be useful. I want my asset to have the proper fit, form, and function of the original assembly. So I want it to be recognizable. So maybe I could try bounding boxes for each top level assembly. It's a little bit more recognizable, but really it honestly looks nothing like the air handler. Uh, so if I try the other option again, just bounding boxes is not going to really work for this example. So I'm going to cancel out of this. Uh, and I want to go through another simplification process. A lot of people don't know that there's actually more than one simplification process in Inventor. To access the manual simplification process, you're going to come to the Simplify panel. And on the Simplification dropdown, you're going to see three commands. Simplify View, Design Envelopes, and uh, Create Simplified Part. Now these are three separate steps in the manual workflow and we want to handle them in the order that they present themselves. So we're going to start with simplify view. When you click this command, you're going to basically select the components that you want to participate in the final uh, part. So for instance, this motor, I want to, I want to keep that. And uh, I'm going to uh, hold my control button down. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm just going to select these other parts here. I'm not holding the control button down. I'm just going to select these uh, steel members on the right side of the part. There's a shroud here and this um, this shelf that's made out of sheet metal. I want to I want to include that as well. There's a couple of uh, steel components here. So I'd like those to be in the final part. I'd like those to be represented. Uh, you'll notice that it's the same foot right here. And there's an option on the little mini toolbar that if I turn that on, if I select that foot again, it'd pick both of them. So as long as they're both selected, that's fine. I'm gonna come up and select the rest of the steel members there. And there's some steel framework at the top of this. I wanna select that as well. Now you kind of have to trust me on this. This is a manual workflow. So the last part I'm going to select is this piece of sheet metal right here. It's a flat piece of sheet metal that represents the housing. And we'll adjust this a little bit later in the process. But those are the only parts that I want to include in my simplified representation. I'm going to click OK. And all the other parts are going to disappear. 
Now this is going to create a design view called simple view. Now, if you ever want to adjust this, all you have to do is come up and reactivate the command and you can add or remove parts from your simplified view. Now I want to look at the next step. In the manual process, the next step is to define our envelopes. So I'm going to select this option and again, I'll get another mini toolbar. So you can define envelopes in two ways here. You can define bounding boxes or bounding cylinders. Well, let's do our bounding boxes first. Uh, so let's see, um, they also have the option uh, right, just like before the option to select all occurrences, I have that on. So for instance, if I select this foot and I click the little, um, I have the OK button or the apply button. If I click the apply button, you'll see that both feet are updated to bounding boxes. So I'm going to go around and click the apply button each time for my steel structure. Make sure I've got all the steel structures set up. Now I want to focus on a couple of pieces here. Uh, the shelf. I'm going to select the shelf. Now when you select your bounding box, you do have options. There's a number of flanges on this shelf and I can actually reduce the size of the bounding box so that I don't want to take those flanges into account. I'll click the apply button and it's kind of the same thing with the shroud here i'm going to click the shroud and this time i'll go to the top view and it has flanges on it as well so i'm just going to reduce the size of that and then finally the motor uh, now for the motor i want to use a bounding cylinder i'll click the bounding cylinder select this and just like before you have arrows that allow you to resize the bounding cylinder manually i can also change the length of it there's a shaft at the end of the motor and i don't want that to be accounted for here in the final part So those are my simplified bounding boxes and bounding cylinders. I'll close out the part. And again, looks a little bit closer to the way the air handler looked, but I want you to understand I'm not finished yet. Now the next step is to go back up to the simplification flyout, and now we're going to create our simplified part. This is the typical file export to the single simplified component. Uh, I'm going to choose to create uh, one solid body with seams. That's going to be my uh, style option. Uh, I'm going to call it blower simple. I'm going to change my template here to my standard IPT template. And the location will be in my main workspace directory, which is fine. I'll click OK. And here is my simplified part. Now remember I said I wasn't finished yet. Um, a lot of people look at the simplification process and you think that generating the simplified part is the last step. It's actually not. Uh, I can certainly come in and add or subtract features from this design. Let me show you what I mean. Well, I, I, that triangular shelf, uh, I can actually mimic that pretty easily with the chamfer command. I can come in and chamfer that edge and add what looks like that triangular shelf there for the design. I'll click OK. And how about adding a fillet to the top of the shroud? Uh, let's see. Let's add, instead of that, let's add a full round fillet. We'll just select these three faces here. I'll click OK for that. And then the actual air handler itself, I'm just going to do some typical modeling. I'm going to sketch on this face. I'm going to project my geometry for that face and I'm going to extrude that profile until it hits this face over here. 
There we go. So now I've got a much simpler looking uh, air handler. It looks very much like the original, but this one is a single part file instead of uh, an assembly with numerous parts. Uh, I've removed all the internal detail. I've made sure that it represents the original assembly. It's recognizable and it's certainly a good candidate now to become a factory asset. The only other thing I think I could do is come over here and choose to break the link with the original derived assembly. At this point, I'm ready to take this part and go ahead and use it as the basis for my new factory asset. Now this is where this demonstration is gonna stop. We just wanted to focus on the manual simplification method that is available in Autodesk Inventor. I hope you got a lot out of this short little demonstration and I hope you get a chance to use this manual simplification process on your next assembly when you're publishing assets for the factory design utilities.